Yo, what's good, everybody? It's your boy Hayden, and today we are back with another video. And in this video, I'm giving you guys my full rundown and my absolute favorite moments from Raw 30th anniversary. Before we even get into this video, if you guys do enjoy any of this content, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications, and share my videos. And let me know in the comments what you guys enjoyed the most about last night's Raw. All right, so to kick off the show, we had Hulk Hogan come out with Jimmy Hart, and he cuts his promo basically just what you gonna do hulkamaniac blah 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 you know the usual hulk hogan stunt that he always pulls uh nothing really too special about it i i like hulk hogan just as much as the next person i don't like him just as much as the next person so this didn't really do anything for me personally but i do think that it was a really good way to kick off the show and it definitely got all of the fans and attendants up on their feet and ready immediately following that we had the tribal court where Sami Zayn was basically on trial for betraying Roman Reigns and betraying the bloodline. Uh, first off, Paul Heyman was the prosecutor in this case. He was finding all the evidence he could, videos of Sami Zayn just not being there when he was needed, videos of Sami Zayn interrupting or getting in the way of Roman, and basically just put it all together and played this big video, and it was supposed to be the, quote, evidence that Sami Zayn was guilty as charged. He pulled together this video of Sami Zayn not helping the Usos during when Drew McIntyre was attacking him. He got this video of Sami Zayn holding up a forever sign with his hand, talking about a something between him and Kevin Owens. Basically said that Sami Zayn was guilty of conspiring with Kevin Owens to try and take down the tribal chief. Sami Zayn then got up and said his defense is that he has no defense. And that's when Roman Reigns got pissed, he snapped, he started yelling on the mic, and then he yelled solo which was basically trying to tell Solo to go execute him. As soon as Solo is about to lay down that Samoa spike, lo and behold, Jay Uso gets up, he stops him, and he saves Sami Zayn. Jay Uso then reveals that he made a video of his own, which is basically evidence that Sami Zayn is not guilty and that he's not conspiring to take down the tribal chief. And he basically just puts together videos of when Sami Zayn was able to help the Usos win matches, of when Sami Zayn was able to help the Bloodline win matches, he put together a video from War Games, uh, just tag team title defenses where Sami Zayn was there to help them win. After this video is played, Roman Reigns stands up and he says that he finds Sami Zayn not guilty, but for now, he said he wants Sammy to finish the night. He doesn't want to see him until Saturday at the Royal Rumble, and that is where Sami Zayn will deliver his final test to show if he is loyal to the Tribal Chief and the Bloodline. I'm not sure what final test means in terms of what Sami Zayn is actually going to do, but I guess Saturday at the Royal Rumble, we'll find out. Right after this segment, the Usos had their tag team title defense against Judgment Day, which by the picture, you can tell the Usos were able to win, but in case you can't tell by the picture, these are not both of the Usos. This is Jay Uso and this is Sami Zayn. That's because during the match, Jimmy Uso went down with a uh, kayfabe injury and Adam Pierce went out and he was like, you know what? I let the Judgment Day replace Finn Balor with Dominic, so I'll go ahead and let the Usos replace Jimmy with Sami Zayn. So Sami Zayn was able to come into the match mid-match after Jimmy went down with his injury and he was able to help Jay defend the titles. I'm not gonna lie, this was actually a very, very good match that I did not expect. I'm very pleased with the outcome. I'm very pleased with how everything happened. And this is showing that Sami Zayn could actually be loyal to the tribal chief and the bloodline and by helping the Usos win, he proved it. After the Usos match, they put on probably my entire like favorite of the whole show. They put on this segment with LA Knight where LA Knight's basically in the ring and he's calling out Bray Wyatt. He's saying Bray Wyatt's just like these past legends. He's living on past glory. Uh, he's trying to do the fun house and the fiend. You know, he, he's not anything anymore. He has to live on what he used to be. And he calls out any legend who has the guts to come out and stand up to him. And if you guys don't know, my absolute favorite star of all time in the WWE is The Undertaker. And you know who came out and stood up to LA Knight? The Undertaker. But not only The Undertaker, the American badass The Undertaker. So here comes The Undertaker rolling out on his, on his bike. Uh, the crowd went actually insane. What I'm telling you guys, the crowd pop was huge. I'm telling you, the crowd pop was huge. People were very, very excited to see The Undertaker. And not only The Undertaker, but The Undertaker on his motorcycle. That's pretty cool in my opinion. So he comes out, he's riding his bike around the ring, whatever. He gets in the ring and that's when, you know, LA Knight looks at him. He gets out of the ring and LA Knight starts walking up the ramp, basically talking about, 
Oh no, after this weekend, I'm the Prince of Darkness. I'm the King of Darkness. After my pitch black match and I'm gonna have with Bray Wyatt, you just watch and see. And imagine the headlines that we could create. LA Knight sends The Undertaker to The Undertaker. So LA Knight's sitting there running his mouth, you know, disrespectful as always. And then right behind him before he can get any further is my second favorite of all time, Bray freaking Wyatt. And let me tell you guys something. If you know me, you know my top two all time are The Undertaker and Bray Wyatt. So you know this segment really, really meant a lot to me. It really hit me right in the heart. This was awesome. It was like my childhood and my early adulthood. It's like they're both connecting. It's like it's just a full circle moment and it was actually very, very cool for me to see. So The Undertaker has Ellie Knight in a chokehold about to choke slam him, but then he passes him to Bray Wyatt for Bray Wyatt to hit the sister Abigail, walks up to him after a quick stare down and whispers something in his ear. Nobody knows what he says yet, but a lot of people are saying this is The Undertaker just passing the torch to Bray Wyatt. Then we got a segment that a lot of people are pissed about. Uh, the potential Becky Lynch versus Bayley in a steel cage match. According to multiple news reports and multiple websites, this match was actually supposed to happen and Becky was supposed to go over Bayley. But according to all the news sources, the tribal court segment went actually way too long and they had to cut this match due to reasons for, you know, needing time for everything else on the show. I read that WWE gave two choices and it was either you guys can go out here and have a quick steel cage match or you can go out here and set up the potential for another match later on in the future. Obviously, if you couldn't tell by now, they chose the second option and they chose to not have this match and to continue the feud and build something for later on down the line. Me personally, I'm a little bit disappointed because I was looking forward to this match. I was ready to see it and ready to see what happened, but I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and act like it's Roman Reigns' fault like everyone else was doing. So while it does suck, at least they postponed it and it can get more attention and the match can happen at a better stage. After that, we had a DX reunion segment with Shawn Michaels, Triple H, Road Dogg, X-Pac, and not Billy Gunn, but Kurt Angle for some reason. Uh, as soon as they asked him what he was doing out there, he took off his Kurt Angle shirt and revealed that he had a DX shirt under it. And he said, well, I've always wanted to be part of DX. So that was pretty funny. This segment pretty much ended up Imperium uh, interrupting DX and Seth Rollins and Street Profits come out and save the day. And it ends up getting made into an official match. So the Street Profits and Seth Rollins ended up taking on Imperium in a six-man tag team match with Kurt Angle as the special guest referee. Overall, this was actually a pretty good match. I think that Montez Ford is underrated, as you guys know, so it was good to see him in there and it was good to see DX back for another reunion. Me personally, I never get tired of DX, so it was cool to see. And honestly, the last newsworthy thing that happened on the show was the main event, which was a no disqualification match for the United States Championship, Austin Theory versus Bobby Lashley. I was pretty hyped for this match. It ended up living up to its expectations. Uh, there were some good spots, there was some decent table spots as well. But what usually happens during any Bobby Lashley match that has high stakes, such as a uh, title being on the line, well, you guessed it. Brock Lesnar returned last night, uh, attacked Bobby Lashley with an F5, then proceeded to attack Austin Theory with an F5 on top of Bobby Lashley, which led to Austin Theory pinning Bobby and retaining his championship. This is leading up to another match between Brock and Bobby. So that's going to be pretty cool to look forward to, just in case you guys missed like the first two they've already had. And yeah, guys, that's pretty much going to do it for this video. So if you enjoyed, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share this video, comment down below your favorite moments from last night. Yes, I'm aware this video is also a little late, but unfortunately I had a lot going on last night and I wasn't able to finish recording until today. So hopefully you guys still show some love and I will see you in the next one. Peace.